it's Tessa. So for this week's video, this is something I'm also really excited for since Halloween season's coming up. Coming up, it's it's currently not Halloween season, but I need it to be Halloween season. So this week I am working on a corner to corner crocheted Halloween blanket using this graph I made here. Um, I made it in Stitch Fiddle, which is essentially like a graph making program, kind of. It, it, you can search uh, stitchfiddle.com. When you pull up the page, it's first going to ask you for things like the gauge you're using, if you're crocheting, knitting, or cross stitching, um, if you are crocheting, what are you doing? Is it just general color work? Is it corner to corner blanket? Is it um, something else? What is it? And then from there, you'll fill out any additional information you need to and go from there. And luckily, I have used this program a fair bit, so I was able to make that little design I showed you. And with that, I bought all the yarn I need already. So for the Halloween blanket, um, or the boo cat, or whatever you want to call it, um, I am using seven different colors, which is so many colors. Uh, all of these colors are by um, Big Twist uh, Value Worsted, or Worsted Value, whatever it's called. Um, I know a lot of people were having issues with this yarn last year. I was one of those people. I did not like the new change to the formula. It would split a lot more easily. It was more shiny. Um, it was more rough than I liked it to be, than a lot of people liked it to be. Uh, all seven of these colors are Big Twist. Let's run through them. So to begin with, we are going to have Taupe be our majority color, so it's going to be that full background. I bought four of these. I really hope it's enough. So it is 47 squares by 102 squares, which can either be really big or really small, and I don't know. Um, I tried doing a gauge swatch, and it didn't really tell me anything, unfortunately. I think it was like three squares was four inches, um, but I ended up also deciding I was going to go up a hook size, so I'm going to use a five and a half millimeter hook for this project. Um, but to begin with, like I mentioned, our very first color, or our main color, is going to be Taupe by uh, Big Twist. It's more of like a gray brownish color, I just thought it would be a nice exterior color. The next most used color is going to be just orange. It's a little bit brighter than I was originally intending it to be, but I think that'll work for Halloween Blanket. Um, for all of these secondary colors, I believe I only bought two of each of them because I don't think I'll even go through one, but I was like, just in case I do, I might as well get a second. Plus, Joins was having a really good sale on the Big Twist um, value, and it was like a dollar ninety or like two dollars or something for a single one. Then we have then we have mustard. Um, this is just their like yellowy shade that isn't just a neon yellow. Cause I I'm really not a fan of the color yellow, but I really like the color mustard. So I don't like the neon or the pale yellows. I really like this kind of shade. I like more muted tones just to begin with. Um, so for the mustard, I think that one's also really not going to go through too much yarn, especially since it's just the light of the pumpkin and one of the letters. Next, we have soft gray for the cat. Um, I was going to do a kind of like calico pattern, so the brown, mustard, and like black and white. Uh, because one of my dearly beloved favorite cats in the whole wide world, her name was Gato. Um, and she was a calico. Her real name was uh, Queen Bee for Queen Bitch because she was a calico. Uh, and so she would attack everybody who walked down the hallway because we had a cat tree right there at the entrance. So if you weren't attacked, you were blessed that day. It was great. Um, but I realized that it wouldn't really work too well with the black outline of the cat. I feel like it was going to get muddled. Um, so I just went with a flat gray instead. I do want to eventually make something based on that cat because she's honestly my favorite cat in the whole world. Our trusty black yarn. Um, I thought about getting this in the Red Heart brand instead because I was kind of liking the feel of it but I chose black in this brand because I didn't want to have to deal with weird gauging sizing difference. And then the final color which I already owned didn't have to buy any of because I think it's only like 30 squares in total or something. 
is the deep red color also by Big Twist. I have more of this. Also using the color cream, but I think I'm just going to switch it to gray for one of the other letters. Um, I, I don't need to use an entire separate color for one of the letters when I was already using colors that were already in the pattern. That is uh, the start for you. Um, and the rest of this video is pretty much just going to be some check-ins and then final thoughts at the end. So see you again soon. All right, so I should have mentioned this previously, but this pattern here of the diagonal is part of a function in Stitch Fiddle where you can have it follow what row you're on. So I'm using the corner to corner format, so it's currently doing it the diagonal way. I am not that far into it so far. Also, since I'm left-handed, this leaf technically should be on the right side, but since I'm left-handed, all of my rows are reversed, which is a little frustrating, but it's fine. Um, it's pretty easy to follow. I just have to pay attention to what number of the background color I have on the side I'm starting on. So for instance, the row that's highlighted, I'm starting down here. Um, I have tried to do the intarsia method, is what I've called it and what I've seen other people call it when it comes to color work in corner to corner blankets. So currently we have this little box or something underneath my desk and it's holding all of my active threads. It's um, already chaos. So I don't know how effective this is, uh, especially since I plan on lining this blanket anyway with a fabric. I don't know if I necessarily need to have this looking perfect or pretty or anything. Um, I am just trying to avoid carrying floats because I hate dealing with really long floats. Tension gets messed up, it gets weird, I hate it. Um, but you'll see on like some of these where the threads, like here on this one of the red pieces of the leaf, it has a loose thread here. That's just from me carrying it from this section to this section. These ones I'm fine with because it's not like the tension can really change too much. But uh, when it would come to like this chunk of orange here, which is supposed to be connected to this orange, I would just have to navigate the tension too much and it's just not worth it for me. Um, but yeah, so that's where we're at so far. I'm gonna try to plow through as much of this as I can this weekend and work on it some more next weekend. Okay, right, so I've um, been working on the Halloween corner to corner blanket. I'm a little farther in, as you can tell, I got most of the mouth completed. Again, here's the reference picture. Um, but I have most of the mouth completed and most of the eye, or first eye, completed. And then I think we only have about 10 rows left till we reach the point where I start taking one side and making it go up. Um, overall, it's turning out really well. This is currently our, our ends we're working with, and it's probably not as controlled if I, as I would like it to be. And here's the back currently. We've got some craziness happening. Like here on the eye, I started going back and forth with this one thread, with this one black strand, because I didn't want to deal with two black strands just for the eye. I figured I can do back and forth and it should be fine. Um, but overall, this is what we're working with. But overall, this is kind of where we're at. Um, I'm checking in today because I was going to do an end of the week check-in and kind of check in weekly. Um, but I remembered that on Saturday I have an event and so I don't know if I will be working on this at all. I can't bring it with me because just because of how many ends there are and all of that. But I don't know if it's gonna. I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna work on it at all over that weekend. Um, and if not, I'm trying to just work on it a little bit through the week. I'm all right. So I finally got to the first corner, and I've started just going upwards this way. It doesn't need to be widened anymore. We got into part of the cat, and we've also started to go into the lettering up at the top. I did modify this slightly. The only thing I changed is this exclamation point. I wasn't really liking the shaping compared to the other letters, so I'm going with this for now. I think I can get this done probably over the weekend or by the end of next week. But I gave myself like three extra weeks to work on it to like make sure I have enough time on it. But I'm hoping I will have enough or be able to do it over the next week or so. 
Looking at the back here, um, this is a tangled mess. I originally was worrying about making sure I didn't have too large of floats. I don't care anymore. Um, if you look here at this part of the leaf, there's just Float City. Um, and then the amount of ends here is just insane at this point. Um, so I think my plan is finish this up. I don't really care about the ends or the floats or all of that. Um, and then I'm just going to either make sure all of these knots are tied off or all these ends are tied off and knotted or just attach a um, fleece layer or something uh, to the back side so that none of this will ever be a problem again. All right, so I look a little crazy right now, but I finally finished the blanket. I don't think I can get it in the frame all the way. There you go. Finish the blanket for you guys. This lettering is perfect. For me, it's backwards. Um, I noticed it pretty quickly, but I just decided not to change it because I don't really know why. Um, but I didn't change it, so the lettering's backwards. I don't really care. Um, additionally though, I'm pretty sure in that last clip I said I won't need two weeks to work on this. Yeah, I didn't touch it for like two weeks, <laughs> so I am glad I gave myself the extra time to work on it and finish it. It is basically done. I just have to either weave in the ends or put a backing on it, which I think I'm just going to put a backing on it with some of the scrap fabric I have. I'm just not doing that right now. Overall, I thought this was a really fun, pretty easy project to work on as well, um, for the most part at least. Um, the only thing I really had the issue with was, again, making sure I was doing it correctly, so causing the letters to not be backwards. Although I easily could have inverted the lettering and it would have been fine. I don't know. But overall, it went really well. Um, I'll probably do one again eventually. Uh, I don't really know when though. I like creating my own patterns for corner to corner blankets versus doing anything else for it. Um, but yeah, see you guys next week.